Good morning, afternoon, evening, and good night. I'm uh, Zombo. And I'm Shade Reagan. And, uh, well, we gave up on our other channel, but we decided we just wanted to uh, talk Warhammer 40k, talk armies. and Yeah, we're going to rank them on how much we like them, not how actually good they are meta-wise. Because honestly, if you're following the meta, what's wrong with you? I mean, you know, enjoy what you like, but also play what you like. And if you play Tau, you suck. And just know that narrative play is best play. Uh, I mean, if you want to be wrong, but let's go, let's uh, let's begin. Uh, this is again, you know, obviously entirely based on uh, subjective opinion. Uh, if you but if you disagree, you're wrong. exactly. And uh, you better get to the comments and tell us why we're wrong. I will engage you, and you will be wrong. We've got a whole stratagem based around proving you wrong. It only costs one command point. And on a uh, two plus, we get to refund that command point. Yeah. And and if we roll a six, we get to break one of your models. As long as it's unpainted. Exactly. All right. I think that's enough delay. Indeed. Shall we get to it? Uh, looks like the system uh, alphabetized automatically. So looks like we're starting with A's. Uh, the Toaster Fuckers. The Adeptus, Adeptus Mechanicus. Mechanicus. I think the Adeptus Mechanicus have a great aesthetic. I'm not a fan of they a do. lot of their... Uh, I, don't, I don't like their vehicles, but uh, the General uh, Skitari, the uh, Tech Priest and stuff, I'd give them a good solid B. Yeah, I, I, I agree there. Like Their aesthetic is great, even if it's not enough to get me to want to play them. Uh, I've played them in a couple RPGs, uh, and I've enjoyed being a Mechanicus character. I like their vehicles, but I also don't like all of their units. I think some of them are clear winners. Like, their Cataphron Destroyers, I don't particularly care for, whereas I think the Rangers look amazing. I also love the uh, Electro Priests. Yeah, and they, they also very much fit the setting. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they, they're one of those things that scream 40k. Gameplay wise too, like the Canicles of the Omnisaya, they're that's an interesting gameplay twist without feeling too over or underpowered. Yeah, the only thing gameplay wise is they're not <clears throat> they're not quite the most versatile army in the world. You can do melee, but I do feel like it's generally expected you to lean on shooting. That said, I have seen some scary things done with melee, like um, the uh, the dragoons, the uh, the guys on the chicken legs with the uh, gim suits. Yeah. Uh, their taser goads always mess Hurt. up my guys, even in when I'm playing fully melee armies. They have apparently a really good Forge Worlds melee unit. Oh, that, like, yeah, when it yeah. makes saves, it hits you back. We're going to... Honestly, I might bump them up to A tier. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. There's not very many things I can say about them except for the fact that I don't care for their vehicles. With that, they, though... They... Oh. The, the only thing is they need diversification because right now their only special character is Mars. They need yeah. the other the other Forge Worlds need some love. But I think that's going to be a consistent theme with most of these uh, factions. Probably. All right. Second the, up, the Ostra Militarum, the Imperial Guard, Ooh. the normal guys this, in the setting. This is going to be a controversial one. Um, I. Don't like the Imperial Guard, the Ashimotarm, by and large. I think they're rather boring. I think they're boring to play against. I think they're boring, like, just on the table model-wise. But I really, really, really love the Death Corps of Krieg. And no, not in the meme oh, happy gas mask noises, I don't want to die, shovels. I like them because they're one of the most grimdark armies in the game by the fact that they are completely devalued of human life like you know they're it's an entire planet that raises generations to be sacrificed so i'm not necessarily going to disagree with you or argue with you um i will say i really love the imperial guard you know the bane blade is one of my favorite models in the entire line um but playing against guard armies even as someone who has a guard army, I've got my own Armageddon army. Um, 
I understand they're very tedious to play against. I personally prefer to uh, go less into the horde and more into the vehicles, but even then, that also raises its own issues. So and it's not even just like the tedium; it's the game feels a little less fantastic when you fight the Imperial Guard. Yeah. So I I'd, I'd be I'd be cool with uh, putting them in a C tier. I uh, yeah, I agree, C tier. All right. Like, next it, off. If we if we separated out all the different kinds, like Deathcore would be S tier for me, but then we'd be here all day. Yeah, I'd put uh, Armageddon in A tier. I wouldn't even put the Armageddon in S tier. Uh, I don't especially care for the Deathcore, but it's not. I don't have a dislike for them. Well, we can both agree that uh, Katachan would be D tier, right? Yeah, I, I can't stand Katachan. Katachan, that's it. Speaking all of right. uh, melee or um, just lots of of kill stuff, uh, the Black Templars. I hate the Black Templars. Yes. Our first Marine uh, army. Um, I'd put them in C. I'm, They're not... I'm I'm tended to agree. Uh, this is going to be a controversy right up front. I really don't like Loyalist Marines, which is weird because of the poster boys. You'd think you'd love them. And Black Templars are one of those... One one of those marine sub factions that I very much question why they have their own codex. Yeah, and I think it, that's just going back to fifth edition. People fell in love with. Uh, I think Matt, did Matt Ward make the Black Templars? No, uh, they had their own codex back in like uh, third or fourth Was edition or because fourth they edition? came okay. out. They were in a starter box where yeah. they were fighting uh, Jukari. Yes, whenever the Jukari renew. When they were the Dark Eldar. Um, yeah. So I'd be willing to. I would say put them in C tier because, as far as marine like loyalist marines go, they're not super offensive. But at the same aesthetically, time, aesthetically, they are kind of cool. Yeah, and that's what bumps them up to C tier for me. They're not the most boring marines in the world. And I think that's where their interest ends for me. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I also think they're fun to play against, but that's because I have a preference for melee combat and melee versus melee games are some of the most fun I ever have. Oh, I absolutely agree on that. Speaking of Melee versus Melee, Blood Angels. As far as unique chapters go, Blood Angels are my favorite. Really? Yeah. Uh, I love the general aesthetic. I love the like how screwed they are, lore-wise, uh, where they're all basically one bad psychic wave away from uh, becoming... Uh, going into the Black Rage. Uh, I do think that does make them a little more interesting because they have... Their unique thing is a character flaw. Yeah. Um, and then of my course main got, problem... And then, of course, you've got oh, you know, uh, the other chapters of the Blood Angels, you know, like the Lamenters, who is just... Oh, you, uh, you guys wanted even a semblance of happiness? Nah, nah, screw you. And that just amps up their grim dark. Yeah. Um, the, I'll say some bad things about them. I feel like sometimes GW makes new stuff for them to justify them having their own codex. Like, I, to this day, I'm like, why do they have psychic dreadnoughts and no one else? That psychic's not even really a blood angel thing. Especially when um, psychic dreadnoughts were literally created by the Thousand Suns and Thousand Suns can't even have them. Yeah. But, like, Death Company, okay, I get it. Yeah. Like, blood I Angels Death also Company, look. I love uh, Sanguinary Guard. I love all the Blood Angels characters. Blood Angels score some points for me because they look cool and they're involved in a lot of things I love about the setting. Like they're the pro, they're the face of Space Hulk for the Marines, mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool. Um, I would have put them also in C tier, but I see you leaning towards B tier, and I don't dislike them enough that. I think we can stick them in B tier. All right. Next off, we've got Chaos Demons. And speaking as a Slanesh player, I love Chaos Demons. Every single one of them has something that makes them very uh, stand out on their own. Um, they're very emblematic of the setting as a whole. But at the same time, uh, mono armies, none of them really do a lot on their own. But that's why the army is designed to be a soup army. I enjoy Chaos Demons quite a bit. Uh, they're one of those things that make 40k 40k because it's not a usual sci-fi setting if if there's freaking demons in the place and demons can invade. 
Um, I think it's a tragedy that Chaos Demons are so rare, considering they kind of are the main threat of Chaos. Yeah. In a lot of ways. The only thing I'll say with them is I feel there's a disconnect between the lore and the tabletop. Because Chaos Demons get played up as these like impossible and crazy, creepy things, and you know, the they are the big threat. And then you face them on the tabletop and like blood letters are they slightly, slightly a, like lesser than gene stealers. They did get a giant buff in uh, their new codex with the uh, the demon mm-hmm. saves. Uh, they, they added a lot to their survivability. They literally had to cut down their uh, giant blobs because of how much more killy they all became. That's fair. And the new one might make it a little bit better because I, I always thought it was weird that Chaos Demons were a horde army and like a demon was weaker than a, a Chaos Space Marine. So here's um, the question. Would you put them in A or B tier? I'm leaning towards B tier, only for the simple case of there are some parts of Chaos Demons that are A tier, but there are other parts that drag them down into B tier for me. Yeah. Like, like Slanesh, Demons, I think... and, and uh, you know, Keepers of Secrets are fantastic. Blood Letters and Blood Thirsters are gorgeous. I love... Uh, the Nurgle demons and, and great unclean ones and uh, Zinch demons exist. And what about um, Lords of Change? Lords of Change are nice. And then, of course, there's Bellator I, and, and forget Bellator. I, I like corn demons a lot. <clears throat> corn demons I pretty much universally like. Not a big fan of Nurgle demons. Slash demons are hit or miss. Zinch demons I tend to like, but that's. They uh, they don't quite look like demons. I kind of like them a lot because they they sometimes dip a more Lovecraftian. Fair enough. Um, what are you feeling? Because like I said, I, I summon A, summon how, B. Because of how like emblematic they are of 40k, I want to put them in A. Like I I I would not be able to argue for them being S, but I think they're like Admech, where it's like their aesthetic kind of defines the setting for me. Okay, A tier. All right. Next is Chaos Knights, and uh, we Duncan got, is we got sad Duncan. so disappointing. I hate knights. I hate knights. I hate Chaos Knights, and it's not even like the whole oh we don't we don't need armies of centerpiece models. It's I don't like their aesthetic, and facing off against them is just tedious. Yeah. Um. That said, Chaos Knights do have a better aesthetic than Imperial Knights do. But yeah. I might put them... I'd put them in D myself. And you know what's one of the things is the Age of Sigmar equivalent of knights, Sons of Behemoth, are so much more fun mm-hmm. than knights because they use their large size to also put in some wacky roles. Like, Sons of Behemoth can move objectives around because they punt them. That's hilarious. Whereas knights... Like, okay, it's a robot, but, like, it's a big mecha... But it's not that much different from fighting, you know, vehicles. Just has a lot of wounds. I don't feel like they have a lot of really fun interactions. Yeah. As and, far as and the problem with night problem with night games is you either win them or you either lose them. And, and like, there's no there's no middle ground. It's never a close game. With yeah. Knights. Yeah. No. It's either you are prepared to fight knights or you are not prepared. Yeah. So I'd put them in D. Yeah. D tier. All right, next, Chaos Space Marines. <laughs> um, Chaos Space Marines, I like uh, Chaos Marines. I don't love them. I think a lot of their issue with Chaos Marines is a lot of their stuff is just uh, Marine stuff, but spiky. When you get away from that, yeah. I love their stuff. Like, I love their demon engines, you know, Forge Fiends, Mauler Fiends, I love them. Uh, Lord of Possessions. What's that, What's that dude who's riding the... Uh, Mech. Lord Discordant. Lord Discordant, yeah. When it comes to, you know, their chaos but evil, or the, the we're Marines but evil, um, you know, the Chaos Marines, the Terminators, Warp Talons, Raptors, I'm very blase about them. Uh, I don't like a lot of their named characters that are the Codex versions, like the, the basic Marines. Uh, when we get to the other factions, I might have more to say on those, but as far as, you know, uh, Abaddon, Abaddon, whatever you want to call him, or uh, Huron Blackheart, meh. I have never bought GW's attempts to betray Chaos Space Marines as the main bad guys of the setting. Like, I, I like Chaos Space Marines when they are 
you know, raiders and, like, really strong soldiers, but, like, too few in number. But, like, when they come down, it's really bad. But anything to do <clears throat> with the Black Legion and the Black Crusades and that stuff I've never cared for. Um, I really, really like the Iron Warriors. I kind of like the Alpha Legion. But past those ones, a lot of the Chaos stuff loses its luster with me. Yeah, I personally, I'm a, I'm a big Slanesh guy, so I like the uh, Emperor's Children. Uh, I also like the uh, Alpha Legion, but like I can't stand uh, the Night Lords. <laughs> we are the scariest Marines with our Batwing Night, Night Lords get into the Grim Derp, in my opinion. Yeah. So C for Chaos? C for Chaos or B for Bad? Um, Let's B for Bad. Let's be for bad? All right. Just because uh, if I compare them to Blood Angels, I think I am equally okay with them. Dark Angels um, are my second favorite Loyalist Marine uh, Legion. I know you don't care for them, though. I They really... They're in the same field as Black Templar, where I don't get why they have their own codex. I think they could have oh, just I, I absolutely said, agree. They don't need their own codex. If, if, you feel, if you feel Dark Angels as your army, you can... Take more bikes and take more terminators. They yeah. absolutely do not need their own units. Uh, so you want to put them in C or D? I will C T of them. Okay. I don't get them. I don't. I don't get the appeal of them. Um, I I never got into their storyline of the whole secrets thing and the fallen thing. See, but they make for some funny memes. And the memes are kind of why I really like Dark Angels. Because, you know, everyone makes the same goddamn memes. But, I mean, this, they do the same thing with Ultra Smurfs and uh, Space Corgis and stuff like that. But um, I like all, uh, Dark Angels because they're, like, you know, as far as Marines are, like, the, the, the champions of humanity, the greatest they are, Dark Angels are kind of the ones doing the dirty work in order for the, the other Marines to be able to stand tall. The fact that they're able to do evil shit in order to be able to keep keep on doing their their dark mission like i get that but i also feel like a lot of times they do stuff counterproductive to yeah but that's the 41st yeah, in yeah, general yeah. as in like, like they, hey they showed up at vrax took one spaceport and then left yeah or they showed up in um vigilus uh found out that they were fallen and took off yeah uh so yeah i'm, I'm okay with c tier uh, I do like, I, I will say, I do like Dark Angels. I do have a Fallen Army myself. Uh, but, you know, Fallen Army and Army anymore. Thanks, GW. Thanks. Hey, at least you have, um, what's his name? <sighs> Moving on to something less yeah. depressing. Uh, let's talk about the A-tier Death Watch. Yeah, A-tier for sure. Death Watch are the best. The only way Marines are interesting as, Loyalist Marines are interesting as characters, because... You have a culture clash between different chapters that can create personality conflicts that makes them interesting as people instead of just killing the machines. Yeah. And, um, you know, them being, you know, Inquisition aligned as well means they get to do a lot of stuff that you won't necessarily see with Space Marines. They're also tied into a book series I rather enjoy which is The Beast Arises, because that is the origin story of the Death Watch. Yes. My only criticism for the Death Watch, and this is going to pop up with a later faction, is now that GW has done a better job of fleshing out other Imperial factions, it's a little weird the elite Xenos Hunters are only Marines. I'm frustrated in that we still can't... Aside from the new rules that have been shown off, shown off for... Um... Uh, Arcs of Omen, we still don't have a proper Inquisition faction. Yeah. And I would love to be able to play an Inquisition faction. Well, there was sort of one in um, Warzone Octarius, I think the second book, but that one's of dubious rules legality these days. Yeah. All right, well, A tier, I'm I'm not going to argue with this. I, I also love the Death Watch. Not enough for me to actually build a Death Watch army myself, but... No, but you build a kill team of them. The proper way to play Death Watch is not to play them on the war game. You play kill team with them. That reminds me, I need to finish painting your Death Watch. Yeah, you do. All right, moving on to my first army and my favorite flavor of Eldar, uh, the Drakari. 
Can you give me a reason why they shouldn't be S? Uh, no. Um, I don't, like, they're not for me, but Jukari are such classical villains of the setting, even if they weren't here from the start. They fit in so well. They're grimdark as hell. They are arguably, and it's very strong arguable, that they are the most evil faction in the game. Yeah, because so, uh, so many uh, armies, like the evil armies, are like... Uh, the best, you know, the the road to hell is paved with good intentions. No, the Jukari saw their path, and they decided to turn up the speed and uh, blow a few more rails of coke. The yeah, my only my reservation with Jukari is I don't like their aesthetics universally, but there are aesthetics among them I really like, like Drazahar and the uh, is it it's the Incubi that have yes. the glaives, right? Yes, they look great. I like the Mandrakes; they look pretty cool. Um. But like I said, it's just not a universal thing for me. I don't care for some of their stuff. When I first started getting interested in Warhammer, uh, back in like 2015, 2016, um, there was a few factions that I knew of through memes and internet stuff that I kind of wanted to uh, look into the, the rules of. Uh, so the first ones were Slanesh and Orcs. And Slan Ash was, haha, it's the god of sex. And it's like, okay, uh, let's look at the models. And uh, the models were hideous. Uh, then there was the orcs. And the orcs were, haha, you know, uh, red goes faster. And, and you can think on, they, they think on stuff and make it uh, make it work. Which, you know, that's not how it works. But um, And then you look at their models and they just look janky. And not in like a fun way. In a, we're going out of our way to make this look janky. But then I found out about the Druk about the Drukari, and I never I never liked Dark Eldar. That's why I'm not using the word Dark Eldar. And Dark Eldar is just like we are the Eldar who saw where our path was going. We kept going. We created a god of chaos, and then decided to just uh, continue on our path, not change anything, and just get even worse. I and still remember when I told you the lore behind the Drukari. Uh, in that 20 minute story I tell where the word murder fucking was used very often. Yeah. And it's like, okay, this, this faction sounds hilarious. And then you look at their models and this was right a, a little bit after they got uh, their plastic update and their models are also fantastic. And I'm just like, well, there's my army. And so I started with Drakari and my first model is hideous. I might put it up on the, on the screen here. Um, but uh, no, I, I, I love Drakari. I don't play them so much anymore because my army is, is beat to crap and I need to uh, rebuild them. But uh, no, they're still one of my favorite factions in the army or in the game. Speaking of space elves, though, we come to their uh, the other side of the coin. And here's the, the uh, Asser Yanni or the Craft Worlders. And here's the Eldar that you love a lot more than I do. These are yeah. my least favorite flavor of Eldar. So. A bit of a complication here. I like certain craft worlds. I really like Beltan. I kind of like a Yandin. Um, there's one that's like purple and green. They have a cool color scheme, and they're like known for being like really suspicious because they were stuck in the warp for a long time. Those ones are cool. Uh, but I don't care I for. I think it's a Sawin. No, Sawin's the red ones. Oh, they're, they're the ones with jet right. Bikes. Yeah, they're, they're the jet speedy ones. They're like called Ill Kaith or something like that. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I remember their color scheme look cool. Um, I really like Aspect Warriors. I think Aspect Warriors are cool. But I don't love everything with the Eldar. I don't love every uh, sub-faction belonging to them. Um, however, I'm going to make an argument here. They're A-tier because they are so fundamentally 40k. Personally, I don't. I, I like a lot of the Aspect Warrior stuff. Uh, I don't like a lot of pastel colors with stuff like uh, Striking Scorpions or um, what are the blue ones? The um, Dire Avengers. Dire Avengers. And they're they're just kind of weirdly rainbowy. But then you've got hilariously dumb lore like Fire Dragons. Craft Worlders are my <laughs> least favorite flavor of Eldar. I can't disagree with you. Uh, so yeah, we can put uh, Eldar in uh, in A. There's a reason despite not being one of the most played armies, that whenever a 40k video game gets made, they're one of the first to get slipped in. Because fuck the Eldar. And we want to kill the Eldar. Okay, uh, ready for a really easy choice? Yeah. Gene Sealer Cult, let's S tier. Just skip, let's just skip the entire yeah. discussion. <laughs> uh, Gene Sealer Cult are a faction that, like, 
it's hard to dislike them. Like, even if you're not going to play them yourself, um, my they're cr- so characterful. Yeah, my biggest critique of Gene Stealer Cults is how much GW charges to play Gene Stealer Cult. Yes, the unit you need the most of comes five for sixty bucks. Yeah, and it's like thanks GW, and then of course. You know, you you uh, to get the weapon loadouts that you need, you need eight boxes of them. And for the, one the only other thing of, of uh, twenty, playing them is very complicated. They are not a newbie-friendly army. You have to play underhanded. You have to gotcha your opponent. You have to uppercut them when they're not looking. And so, nine times out of ten, Gene Sear cult, kind of like a night games. You either win hard. Or everything went wrong and you lost hard. But God, does it feel satisfying when everything goes off perfectly and it just feels like your opponent has nothing they can do because you planned out everything. Early on in ninth, I remember having a a game with a a buddy of mine who also plays Gene Stiller Cults. Uh, Not you, of course. Um, And we were playing Gene Stiller Cults against each other. And we, uh, it was uh, the deployments uh, map where you have like, uh, you're both in one corner. Yep, and by the uh, by the end of the game, we had completely changed corners, both of us. Uh, it came down to like a two point difference, and it was just so much fun the entire way through because we're like doing these underhanded techniques. Like I was trying my best to deny his deep strikes, but he also had a lot of like see uh, of long distance stuff that I didn't field. So it's a lot of teleports behind you. Yeah, uh, they are also. They're they're semi versatile in how you build them. You you're always going to be a, a bit of a horde, but you can build them melee or shooting, and that's that's really good and really fun. They both work in those ways. And you can still bring and your like, brothers in. And like I said, they just have so much character. The Kellermorph model is my favorite 40k model. It's so cool. Yeah. But even down to just acolyte cultists, acolyte cultists are my favorite troops unit because. Each of them looks like they tell a story, and they have so much to them. Their smirks, or their glasses, or their cool weaponry that are repurposed industrial equipment. They're one of the best armies to write your own lore about. This is your cult. How does your cult operate? Especially like, God, have... if they aren't a pain to paint. You know, I don't actually have that much issue painting uh, Gene Slayer cults. I mean, then again, you. Like, I have a lot of armies, and uh, yeah, I also play a certain other army we're going to talk about later that's not noob friendly. Um, but uh, yeah, no. the The only critique I can have for thousand or for Genestar cults is how much it costs to play them. Yeah. Moving All right. On. Well, to uh, the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. I don't think we're going to argue on this. Uh, I hate green knights. D tier. I hate Grey Knights. Oh my god, I hate yeah. Grey Knights. In a faction, uh, in, in a world of people that are special snowflakes, the Grey Knights are the specialist snowflakiest of them all. And similar to my criticism of Death Watch, it's really weird that only Marines can become expert super demon hunters. Oh, but they're all in, in special uh, Terminator armor, and um, and they never fall to chaos. You can't have that with other factions. Could you imagine having an army of uh, mortals who don't fall to chaos willingly? Yeah, and they all have to have their psychic powers, and their and they, I I I started playing this game in fifth edition, and I have bad memories of when they were the most broken faction I have, and an utter pain to play against because played, you just had to hope your opponent rolled once. I started it in seventh edition and playing Dark Eldar. Uh, well, you know, it was what they were called then. And uh, having an entire army that relies on having open top transports and then going against Grey Knights who have flamers that go around walls. Yeah. It was like, I see a Grey Knight army and I'm just like, well, is there even a point to me trying? Anyway. I don't think we need to dwell on them yeah. too long. Yeah, let's, let's move on. Uh, Harlequins. They're not technically uh, a Codex army anymore, but uh, they are still playable on their own. Uh, they're, in... they're, they're their own army list, even yeah. if their book is rolled in with the Craft World. Yeah, we're not going to put Corsairs because that's, what, one one unit? 
two units, but they're both made from the same kit and are visually the same. Yeah. So Harlequins, uh, these are my second favorite flavor of Eldar. Uh, but I do understand why someone might not want to rank them super high. I'm I'm going to throw them in B tier personally. Yeah. Um, I could I could put them in C tier because I don't really care for them. Um, I, it's similar to Dark Angels. I just never got them. Like, they seem too mysterious for their own good to the point I can't wrap my head around having a Harlequin's, like, character or, like, trying to put write your own lore about Harlequin, like, your Harlequin's army because it's, they're enigmatic and they just show up and do what the laughing See, god says. You say that, but I would say Harlequins are less likely to backstab you for no apparent reason than uh, Eldar are. The, the craft worlders? Yeah. Mm, I would say they're more... But... See, I would say Harlequins are more likely to show up at your base and tell you how to solve the problem in their own cryptic way in comparison to craft worlders who will try to mur wipe you out because you're slightly in their way, uh, maybe make a show of, of allying with you, and then at the last minute kill you all because uh, you're just stupid Monkai and... Um, you might risk one of their soul stones. Yeah, my thought is they're a faction that speaks in riddles for a race that speaks in riddles. Yeah. yeah that dude, said, I love their it, aesthetic. I love their models. I love their play style being like very elite but fast, and um, you know they're they're fragile, but you got to get through their dodging. The one other thing, the last critique on them is they sort of have the Grey Knight problem, because Harlequins are mainly known as the anti-Chaos Force. Like, most of their stuff is about opposing Slanesh. So sometimes, not as much with Grey Knights, but it is a little hard to figure out why they're fighting non-Chaos. Like, you can justify it to a greater degree than the Grey Knights, and that's yeah. why they rank higher. But nine times out of ten, they should probably be fighting Chaos. All right. Next is Imperial Knights, and uh, also D. Yeah. We were talking think... about the, the issues with uh, with Knights when we were talking about Chaos Knights. Yeah. I, I think, like, some of their houses have some stories, but a lot of their stratagems and rules are feel bad. Yeah. And they typically are an army that feel bad to fight. If we and had... it's frustrating, because my main army, I would think, would love to fight a bunch of giant robots. But uh, it's just we're not quite on the same utility. tier. Yeah, yeah. If if we had another level, I'd put uh, Chaos Knights and uh, or I put Imperial Knights and Grey Knights at uh, the lowest tier and put uh, Chaos Knights one a higher, just because I would say uh, Chaos Knights at least have a better aesthetic. See, but, I would uh, do the reverse, just because uh, Imperial Knights I think have had a better job of being characterized. Like I. I I don't have the names memorized, but I memorize at least one of the night, night houses and what they're about. Whereas I don't... None of the Chaos Knight lore has rubbed off on me. Yeah, fair enough. Speaking of has not rubbed off on, on, on us at all yet, uh, Leagues of Votan. Yes, the newest so, additions. When I heard that they were making squats an army again, I was hyped. What the hell are they going to do to make squats feel like their own army? Turns out, crib in the aesthetic of StarCraft II Marines. God, it, like, the Karajan overlords do squats, but do Votan better than Leagues of Votan. Yeah. Uh, would you say these guys are C or D? I'm going to put them in C tier. When they initially came out, they were D tier for me. But as I learned a little, I, I watched some lore videos that went into them. And I grew a bit of an appreciation for them as characters. Uh, I like that they made the Votan like fallible that and they weren't just like a perfect species perfect race and i really appreciate their viewpoints on some of the other factions in the game and uh including the fact that they punked the tau which i think is hilarious i mean anytime the tau gets get punked is a is a good time so you know about the demiurge demiurge thing where um the tau had a a, a rate a client race called the demiurge which were initially suspected to be the replacement of, of squats as space dwarves. Oh, yes, yes. So it revealed that those were just Votan, 
And the thing is, is the Votan do not like to let things slip about their culture. So the Tau just assumed like, oh, you're not humans, you're another species, because those particular Votan were, had like a grayish skin, more in like sort of a stony looking skin. And the Votan just never bothered to correct them. <laughs> it's like, you don't need to know that. That's fantastic. So, yeah. Uh, n- moving on. Uh, another one of my Necron. favorite factions in the in the uh, setting, Necrons. Uh, this is an easy choice for me. Um, ever since Necrons got their complete lore rewrite towards the tail end of 5th edition, I think they have been one of the most characterful and flavorful armies in the game. I think I still to this day say they have the best cast of special named characters in the co- in terms of codexes. Because each of the Necron named special characters feels very cool, very unique, and like they, it's just such a wide array. None of them feel similar to each other. It's like, why do you even have these guys? Yeah, um, they're great. Uh, S tier, S tier. Yeah. And weirdly enough, GW has been on point with Necron Black Library content. Oh man, the Infinite and the Divine is probably the best Black Library book that GW has ever put out. Yeah, and uh, Infinite and Divine, the Twice Dead King books, and Severed all yeah. have been fantastic. I'm just finishing off the second Twice Dead King book. I, I uh, didn't realize it was the second book, so I started with number two before I went to number one. Um, and I'm having a lot of fun reading it. Uh, the, twi- the, the, the twist was really obvious early on, but uh, it hasn't taken away from the quality of the book. Uh, as far as Necrons for me goes, um, when I first started reading about Necrons... And there being the, these like super murder terminators, I was really into it. And when I found out about the uh, the Matt Ward rewrite, I was initially really annoyed because it was just like, why are you giving personality to these emotionless robots? But the more I've learned about Necrons and the more I've played Necrons, uh, the more I'm glad that the the change happened uh, because now you also get to have like the sheer terror Necrons even feel about their own. Uh, flayed ones and their own destroyer cultists. Uh, you get to have the fun of Necron Lords, which is still compatible with old Crons, uh, because they're all in just different states of insanity. And, and point of where Necrons were originally my choice for me until a friend of mine got into them, and then Gene Sturcott came out, which quickly became my choice for a second army, uh, more so than anything else. Necrons were my um, one of the most... number nine, I believe. And I started them at the start of ninth edition with their model of release. They're one of the most um, alien-feeling factions. I love their super science. Uh, it's really cool. Yeah. All great, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, that said, before we move on, who is your favorite Necron special character? As if I'm going to say anyone except Trazin. Uh, Zondrak is kind of... Z- Zondrak and Obreon are kind of up there. And See, it's it's hard to separate them because they function as a duo. Yeah, no, I, I love Nemesis Zondrak and Vargar Oberyn, but um, Trazin was always like again. I I got I got a lot of my interest in 40k initially from internet memes, and so Trazin being the second uh, worst uh, magpie of collecting uh, added a lot of points to him, and then Infinite of the Divine, his back and forth with Arikon was just fantastic yeah it, it's 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 i i honestly i probably have to say trazin is, um even though i do love me zondrek and Obreon. all right uh from one side of the war in heaven to the other we've got the orcs the big bad boys yeah and, um i'm not gonna put them in s but i cannot justify putting them any lower than a yeah I would put them in S for me personally, but I can also see put them in A. They're one of those armies where anytime I'm facing them, I'm very excited, even though I historically have not had the best win ratio again. You know what? Yeah. Let's let's put orcs in S. Orcs are a lot of fun. Uh their lore is great. Uh they're fundamentally forty K. Yeah. Every single orc faction it, it's it's like a G Star cult's like with one exception. I can I can wax about how great every single major GSC faction is. 
Uh, I can do the same thing with orcs. I, I love the bad moons. I love the goths. I love uh, the speed freaks. Um, and you got to appreciate your local orc player because they're not playing the protagonist faction. Uh, orcs are the faction that probably lose the most in the narrative. But, but by God, do they love them anyways. The yeah, they also are winning overall. And they're just so much fun. They're fun to fight. It, it, they're, they've got a great model range. It's Even if it's not up to your you know, up to personal aesthetics for everyone, they're very, very fun. With their new model range, I w- might collect orcs in the future. Like My issue with them before was like a lot of their uh, models were just janky. <laughs> But especially now that they've got like their cars and stuff, I really like the orc aesthetic. They are um, also one half of my favorite war in the setting, and we'll get to the other half later. But uh, but here's the a question. big plus for me. Here's the question, Shade. Yeah. Why would you ever play a melee army with initiative two? <laughs> and they used to have furious charge. All right, awaken my abs of steel. We got the custodies. Um, so I know he ragged on the Grey Knights earlier as being huge Mary Sues. So this is going to be very probably controversial and hypocritical coming from that. That I think custodies is a tier. I was surprised. I I don't like power armor armies typically. I don't really like space marines. They've never appeared to me. And then I started reading Custodes' books and getting into their narrative. And they are everything the Marines lack, the Custodes have. Custodes are not brainwashed child soldiers who have never known nothing. But they have so much more of an individual personality. Uh, Custodes disagree with each other, but you know, respectfully, they have thoughts and feelings about the wider Imperium because they view it being in the palace all the time. Uh, they make for so much more interesting characters. And we can't forget, this isn't just the Custodes. This is also the Sisters of Silence. And see, there's, and... there's where I'm going to make my argument against them. Mm-hmm. Um, I have two reasons not to put uh, Custodes as high as A rank. Okay. Uh, first off, playing against Custodes is just an exercise in frustration. Mm, yeah. They don't die, but they're also not necessarily dominating the field. So it's like, you can't really take points off of them. But also, they're not going to be going around killing everything on the board. They're so what 5th edition Grey Knights were. Yeah, and so it's just tedious to play against them. My other argument uh, argument against them is actually the Sisters of Silence. Because they need more attention. Sisters of Silence are basically an afterthought. Uh, in gameplay, at least. Lore-wise, Sisters of Silence are fantastic. You know, they they've got their they're very they're very much a part of the Talons of the Emperor. Gameplay-wise, they're just there. It's one of the funniest things is, um, at least in the Watchers of the Throne book series, Sisters of Silence are incredibly sassy, and I am here for that. Especially since they can't talk, but they still put off so much sass, and they will absolutely not take the crap of the Custodes. Mm-hmm. But they still like have a respect for each other. So if you, I, if I, you're... I personally say B, but I could I could definitely uh, agree with A if you want to put him there. Gameplay wise, you have a point. So we can drop from the B, but they're B just below A. Yeah, so let's um, stick them. Let's stick them there, more... top of B. Because on top of not dying, they're shredded and playing AF. Yes. You know, it's a lot of gotchas and feel bad moments as you get tangle footed or they charge in your charge phase. Moving on to another faction that I, when I first started, I never thought I'd see in plastic the Sisters of Battle, the Adeptus Sororitas. Yeah, girls. And these are another army where I think aesthetically they are like the 40k army. Like you were saying, you know, yep. guard are boring. Sisters of Battle are the normal humans, except now they're also in power armor, and uh, they have melted guns. They are the opposite. Yeah. They are, the, they are so elaborate, so ornate. They have a tank that shoots missiles that's operated by being an organ. That plays like tubular it. bells. Yeah. 
Uh, the issue with Sisters I'm... of Battle is a lot of their models aren't great. Uh, it, they're very samey. Yeah, they're very samey, and either they're going to have a great general aesthetic, or they're going to be their new weird Palanite, uh, Palantine, whatever they're called, uh, Terminators. The Warsuits? Yeah. I, uh, um, I'm not as down on the war suits, but I, I know people don't like them. I, I do think they're like halberd and shield new units were really cool. Um, they're close to S rank for me. I, I would put them in S, but I, I would also be fine putting them in really high A rank. Let's, I, I'm, I'm a, uh, the issue is I don't want S to be too clogged. So I think we're going to put That's them in high, high A. Hi, A. Um, they are they are so forty k. Uh, they are another army that is so forty k. Yeah, they scream the Imperium. Speaking of screaming the Imperium, uh, Space Marines, basic uh, hammer and bolter Space Marines, the poster boys of the setting. They they outsell other Marine fa- or other f- factions like three to one. And um, speaking as a Space Marine player. Obviously, we're gonna stick them down in C. Yeah, yeah, they are very. I know they are. They are forty k marines. Very boring to me. Very annoyed that they're the poster boys. Um, they. Uh, some of them are cool, but a lot of them aren't. Yeah, and I... the biggest problem with them is the chapters are a monoculture. So it's really hard to tell the difference from one marine character to the other within the same chapter. I play Blood Ravens. Like, I actually have a painted Blood Ravens army. And um, especially the primary stuff is so samey. And I like the same. Oh, like they, the they, feel, they feel like a uniform army. Like, you are wa- march- they are marching into battle. These are the Angels of Death. You could see why. They are the Emperor's handpicked champions. Well, you know, that aren't custodians, but... Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, while they are the face of Warhammer, they're just bland. You know, they're they're not they're not amazing. They're not they're not horrible. They're just there. I probably would have ranked them higher on like just on um pr- uh oh, what's the word I'm blanking on um principle earlier before I got into Age of Sigmar because while I, I'm not a fan of the Stormcast Eternals the Stormcast Eternals are the better poster childs than Space Marines Stormcast Eternals have a lot more character to them they're aesthetically inferior but they're narratively superior yeah and you know they they're able to be the poster children of the of the setting without choking the... everyone else out yeah so, Marines at C tier. Speaking of Marines, uh, the last Loyalist faction that we have here that have their own codex. Because, you know, there are, like, Space the 8th the edition supplements, but we didn't count them. Uh, yeah. Space Wolves. Um, these are another faction I cannot stand. Uh, I think they're boring. I think their fan base is insufferable. D for dogs. D for dogs, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to... Um, and they're frustrating for me because werewolves are one of my favorite horror monsters, and I'm real mad that the vampire marines are cooler than the werewolf marines. But God, space wolves are just so flanderized. Yeah. There's, I I had a friend who used to play the game who played space wolves, and we made the joke of making a drinking game where uh, we'd have to take a sip every time he said the word wolf while describing what was his in his arm. Yeah. My wolf guard with my wolf talisman, uh, and they have some wielding... great characters too, like the uh, the dude in the in the dreadnought. I love him. Oh, uh, the murder fang. Is that his name? Yeah, the, uh... it's like the murder fang. No, I'm talking the character that's in the dreadnought. Oh, Bjorn. They have yeah. two. They Bjorn, have the murder fang and Bjorn they have the Bjorn. Bjorn the fell handed is the guy I was thinking of. They were also a lot better in the Horus Heresy than they were in than they are in 40k. Yeah, but then we gotta talk about the uh, whose side are you on, and and uh, we can talk about that in in a, in a couple of minutes. Yeah, I'm just saying like they were not nearly as badly flanderized. Um, 
their theme was a little different. Yeah. They were a little more on the Viking side and the wolf wolf to the wolf wolf wolfington wolf. Yeah. Moving on, uh, let's talk about the D tier Tau and why they don't actually belong in D tier. Ooh. Ooh, bold claim, sir. Bold claim. So here's my argument. Playing against Tau is tedious. Everybody hates playing against Tau unless you're Tau. Yeah. But Tau have a fantastic aesthetic. Uh, Tau have alien uh, support, which is actually another knock on them because they don't get enough support for their Vespids and Crute and stuff. Uh, they do the giant mechs way better than the Imperial Knights do. Uh, the lore of Farsight is pretty cool. And the recent developments where the Ethereals are not that great, I think is a great uh, step into making the Tau pretty cool. Counterpoint. Not... Okay. Counterpoint. The Tau have squandered their premise. I would I would argue that their initial premise uh, was awful, and they've been trying to flounder to try to find a new premise. And oh, not like being better... the good guys. Not being the good guys of the setting, because there should be no good yeah, I'm saying they should have been the Covenant of 40k, and, and instead, there are so many people who talk about uh, Halo Tau, but no, they should have yeah. absolutely been that. And we just get more and more uh, battle suits and Fire Warrior variants. It's also a little frustrating the amount of plot armor they have as a as a faction, which it's a little understandable because if they lost some of their wars. They'd all be dead. Yeah, but uh, sometimes they are, sometimes they are played up a little too much. But then we get stuff like the Force Sphere expansion and uh, what happened there, and it's hilarious. You know what? So I'm gonna put them in C tier, and I think you're gonna put them in there. Yeah, for the simple fact that at least they're aliens, and I think aliens are the coolest part of. Like I said, I made the arg I was making the argument they don't belong in D. You know what? So I know you said playing against Tau is annoying. You know what I hilariously think is one of the more fun matchups in Tau, at least from watching bat reps? What's that? Imperial Guard. Astromel's arm. The issue I think is that as somebody who plays guard and plays armored guard, uh, putting a uh, a tank on the table only to see it shot off the board turn one because of a uh, of a railgun because you can't really get proper cover for them is super That's super frustrating especially since like I, I think said actually Admech might be their most fun matchup yeah I could see Admech being a more fun matchup because then you're not just oh you've got a strength fourteen uh, cannon on your uh, what do they call broadsides yeah yeah or now you're, uh, now, now your uh, now your bane blade's gone yeah um. Weird, so a weird thing with me, I've noticed. I find mirror matchups in terms of army type tend to be more interesting than. So like melee versus melee is my top game mode. I think shooting versus shooting is also interesting. Shooting versus melee is actually down there in terms of creating interesting uh, yeah. battles. Yeah, and I love melee armies. So because usually it just means one side wins mm -hmm. and wins hard. All right. Um, moving on from Tau, uh, we have my favorite flavor of chaos, the Thousand Suns. Magnus did a lot of things wrong. You see me now, a veteran of a thousand psychic wars. So, the we we talked earlier about how chaos is kind of boring when it's just evil marines, right? Mm -hmm. I would say. The uh, the three chaos variants that we have all do chaos far better than chaos does, or um, chaos space marines. I'm gonna say two out of three, but uh, I would let you know that Thousand Suns are one of the two. All right, uh, so I want to put Thousand Suns up in S. Um, their aesthetic is gorgeous. Uh, their play style is fantastic, where they have presence in every single phase of the game. They're one of the few armies that actually do psychic power, like focus right, and uh, they have the best looking demon primer, or they have the best looking Primarch model. 
I could see an argument for S. I'm leaning more towards A, just because I feel like they're a little less fundam. The thing they're lacking is I feel like they're a little fundamentally part of the core DNA of 40k. Um, I feel like out of the Chaos Legions, Thousands and Emperor's Children are perhaps the lesser of the two of the four breakaways in terms of attention received in the overall meta narrative. So I feel like they're less baked in. And also, Zangors. Too many goddamn Zangors. <laughs> Zangors were a mistake. Yeah, I'll agree but with A. I'll, I'll agree with A. In terms of cool troop units, rubrics are up there because rubrics th- are my they're, 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 they're dust ghosts inhabiting power armor suits. How cool is, how cool is that? Yeah. They're my second favorite troops choice in the entire game. Uh, my first favorite being, just like you, Acolyte Hybrids. It was so good. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with A. Uh, moving on, we've got the Death Guard. And they're my uh, least favorite of the branching uh, Chaos Marines. Yes. But I still um, think they're better generally than most Chaos stuff. I am, it's pun intended, I am sick of Nurgle. Um, Nurgle has become the poster boy of Chaos in wider 40k, and I've gotten very tired of seeing them in every Warhammer video game lately. Uh, they were in Demon Hunters, Vermintide 2, Inquisitor um, Martyr, Dark Tide, Inquisitor Martyr. They just they got pushed to the front. I don't especially care for their aesthetic. I think their power armor looks cool, but like, I don't know, the green feels a little cartoonish to me. So would you um, say B or C for them? B tier. B tier? Yeah. Typhus is a, or uh, Mortarian's also the worst 40k primer. I absolutely agree. Uh, he 100%. is super over-designed. And there's no focal point and he's not demonic enough. Yeah. Uh, moving on, we're just going to stick these guys right here and move on. World Eaters! No, no, no. Uh, Tyranids are... Yeah. Fantastic. Um, easy S tier. Yeah, easy S tier. Uh, we can make arguments about how a lot of Tyranid stuff is meh, like Tyranid units specifically. Um, but a lot of that is just they need a model line uh, uh, face facelift. Uh, but I think did they did they discontinue the Red Terror? Yes, they did. Yeah, but presumably. She'll be back. Maybe. Tyranids were one of the armies that you got me interested in in Warhammer with. Because and they were just, my first army. Yeah. They're just so over the top and evil. But at the same time, they're not evil because can you really say hungry animals are evil? Yes. Yes, you can. Which, the Tyranids are not animals. The yeah. hive mind is a higher level of intellect exactly. than most things. So it's less animals and more the fact that it views us as we would look upon an ant. Mm-hmm. And you do not generally have guilt when you step on an ant. Yeah. So it's like, um, are we the baddies? It's like, well, from a matter of perspective, really. The Tyranids, like, do cosmic horror better than anything else in 40k. Yeah. They're uncaring. They're unfeeling. We can't understand their mindset. We have no idea where they came from. They're from outside the galaxy, and there are indications that they have eaten other galaxies. I love the fact that their existence implies that as bad as the Milky Way galaxy is in 40k, the rest of the universe is probably not much better. I would also and, say Tyranids are super versatile as an army. Yeah, you can compete in every phase of the game. You can build them shooty, you can build them melee, you can build them psychery. You can build them elite Nidzilla. You can build them swarms. You could do mass mid-sized Nids. I I have an army of from Eighth Edition uh, that has uh, nine Carnifexes plus uh, old One Eye and the Swarm Lord. I lost a lot back in Eighth Edition, but now in Ninth Edition they're super viable. Um, and I just love my Nidzilla. And brownie points for them being the origin of the Gene Steel Cults. Yes. Um, which, like, they're now their own thing, but for a long time it was just a Tyranid thing, and you just had Gene Stealers. Um, also, there's never been a bad Gene Stealer model. There's never been a bad Gene Stealer model. Um, 
they're they're they were my first army. I love them. I love to play them. They're great. A little oppressive these days, but maybe the recent nerfs uh, will change some minds in that front. And weirdly enough, you can get very good on your dudesing tyrannids. Yep. It takes a little bit more effort, but the high fleets all have their u- own unique flavor. And that's another thing. High fleets, the difference between high fleets are great. Kronos is great. Tiamat is great. Behemoth is great. Yormungandr, great. The only one I'm a little down on is... Yormunganda. I, I thought that's what I said. Yormunganda. Yormunganda. Okay. Um, Tiamat is super cool. Uh, I know I already mentioned them, but they're one of the top ones for me. Um, their paint schemes are generally pretty fun. They're very they're very easy to paint because they're organic. You can not be consistent, and it looks just fine. They're um, a great faction for uh, contrast paints. Abs- yeah, abs- absolutely wonderful. Got a lot of Tyranids. The only um, issue is, what's the real difference between Behemoth and Kraken? What you, gameplay wise and lore wise, there's just like it's very they're very similar. Well, it, no, um, Kraken's whole thing was when Kraken invaded, it split up as quickly as possible and attacked on as many fronts and as many planets at a time. Behemoth, I always operated as one big super giga fleet. Ah, gotcha. So you know, Behemoth would have all of its hive ships invade one, pl- you know, one sector smash their way through, and then move on to the next. Whereas Kraken was a hundred warfronts. Speaking of uh, our, our earlier uh, laughing at the Tau... Uh... Oh, wait, 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 one last thing. All right. Uh, just because I mentioned earlier, Octarius is the coolest war in all of 40k. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to say uh, the, the Armageddon, but, you know, like I said, I'm a Armageddon guy, so... Well, there we go. Orcs are on the other side of both of them. Yeah, they are. That's why orcs are S tier, because orcs are the best. Um, our final chaos, uh, or a sec- I get uh, eh. our final chaos space marine army. Yep. Uh, the brand new boys, the angry boys, the world eaters. I'm gonna say B for them myself. Uh, um, because I don't especially care for corn generally as a as a lore, but they're a tier for me. Um, corn for me is the most chaos of the chaos factions. There's something beautiful in their simplicity and their just desire to just tear things down and kill, murder, maim, and so forth. Um. A lot of, and Don of War kind of act true to this, uh, a lot of quotes I would think of when I think Chaos Space Marines are attributed to Cornate guys. Um, they're aesthetically, I think they're very cool. Just the axes and covered in blood, the red and brass is very neat. They're a little one note, but that's fine. And Angron looks great. Karn is a really cool character. Karn and is my just, second um, favorite of the uh, the chosen champions of chaos. Yeah, and I mean they just want to kill things as brutally as what's not to love. All right, you convinced me. A tier world eaters, and finally we have the faction that when they came out, I hated them. Oh my god, I hated the Yanari. Uh. It really felt, you know, I had just started my Dark Eldar army, and there's, it's felt like they're saying, yeah, we're getting ready to get, get, uh, getting ready to get rid of the Eldar, uh, and it's all going to just be uh, one banner now. And I hated that. Uh, they, when they were first released, they were super overpowered in comparison to playing Mono Harlequins, uh, Drakari, or or uh, Craft Worlders, and it was just frustrating. But as books have come out and more stuff has come out, uh, Yanari are now just the new faces on the block and everyone is taking turns stepping on them. And I got to respect that. And it's come to allow me to appreciate the Yanari aesthetic. The Vizark is a really, really cool. Mo- so I'm, I'm wanting to put them in B. 
I wow, that's even higher than. I'm fine putting them in B, um, just because I I do kind of dig the Eldar. Um, I feel like I'm a little frustrated they haven't lived up to their story potential as yet. I kind of want them to actually take Slanesh down a peg, and until they do, I'm a little annoyed. Yeah, but, but see, we also had the best uh, introduction for a new uh, demon-named character with uh, Shalaxi Halbane. Uh, absolutely <laughs> humiliating the entire Yanari court. I also say, Incarn is not as cool as the Avatar of Cain, appearance-wise. I disagree. Ooh. That said, the new Avatar of Cain model is fantastic, but the Yincarn is one of my favorite Nandrakari Eldar characters. All right, all right. Um, I do think, th- really enough, the Inari can be very storyful, characterful, and not because it almost feels like if you're not running one of the three characters, I mean, you what's literally the point? you literally have to run one of the three characters. Mm, but at the same time, you have sort of the Death Watch effect of the melding of Eldar cultures. Yeah, and I think that can lead to some cool things. I wish. Uh, we Wish need more of them. Yeah, they not just... didn't just write their two novels. <laughs> yeah, we need more of them, not just wrecking face or getting wrecked. Yeah, and I um... think I think if we get more good fluff of uh, the Inari, I'd be up for bump, bumping that up to A. But as it is, I'm very happy to stick them in B with the uh, Harlequins. That said, one of the coolest things about them is uh, the effect they've had on the Imperium, because in the um... Dark Imperium book, you know, Gilman goes off and's like, why are you doing this thing? The Inari told me. I want to trust him, my lord. I know, but I have reason to believe. And yeah, I, I do like that bit of doubt. That now, like, their Primarch also, is okay with the Xenos faction. Also, Robute Gilliman uh, wouldn't have happened without uh, the Inari, and Robute Gilliman is the best Loyalist Primarch. Yeah. In 40k. In 40k, yes. Yeah, the best. Uh, so here's our tier list. On the S tier, we've got the Drukari, the Dark Eldar, the Gene Stealer Cults, the Necrons, the Orcs, and the Tyranids. Not a single human. Uh, you said Drukari and Dark Eldar. Well, I was saying both names. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I did also notice no human. Yeah, no human factions in S in tier. In the A tier, we've got the Adeptus Sororitas, the Sisters of Battle, the Adeptus Mechanicus, the Cog Boys, the Chaos Demons. The Death Watch, uh, Craftworld Eldar, the Asuriani, Thousand Sons, and World Eaters. In B tier, we've got the Pillar Men, the Custodes. We've got the Blood Angels, the Dark Angels, the Harlequins, the Death Guard, and the Inari. In C tier, we've got the Ostra Militarum, the Imperial Guard, Black Templars, Dark Angels. Oh, whoops. Uh, that's not Dark Angels in B tier. That's Chaos Space Marines. I'm dumb. Yes. This is what you get when you have two pictures of Chaos Space Marines in uh, on a tier list. It's hard uh, to keep track. So yeah, C tier, uh, Black Templars, Dark Angels, Leagues of Otan, Space Marines, and Tau. D tier, we've got uh, Renegade Knights, uh, Grey Knights, Imperial Knights, and Space Wolves. A lot of knights in D tier. Yep. And like I said, if there was a if we had an F tier, I'd put uh, Grey Knights. And um, knights in in there, space wolves I think would stay in D. Yeah, I I maybe tend to agree. So F would be uh, the knight tier. Yeah, but we're just gonna leave uh, it with uh, these five tiers. Well, did this turn out like you were expecting? I mean, I don't think there was gonna be any argument for the the the, the topest top tiers. Um, where the middle stuff went, I think was uh, is interesting. Uh, I am, I am surprised that not one. I figured at least one human S tier. I'm. Uh, it depends on what you. I guess we have human with the Gene Stealer cults. Yeah, I guess we got half. If um, you were to pick one of the A tiers, what would you put up in S? I'd probably say Sisters of Battle. I, I'd also say Sisters of Battle. You want to so stick them in S? Cool. Well, you, uh, you were the one who knocked them down. I said S tier for them. I do believe. Yeah. All right. Let's let's stick them in S tier. But we also don't want S tier to uh Well, be see, I was worried. I was worried about S tier being super crowded, but at this point, it's n- pretty evenly balanced. Fair enough. So yeah. uh, here we are. Let us know what you think. 
Uh, this is going to get posted on YouTube. Uh, and uh, stay mad, Marine players. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think we, we have... We, we made a pretty good argument for them, except for Space Marines. But, you know, yeah. screw them. Screw them, yeah. They're the poster boys. They don't, they don't need favor. Yep. Yeah. All right. Good night, everybody. Or if this is your morning, good morning and good afternoon. I've been Zombo. And I've been Shade Reagan. And remember, in the grim darkness of the far future, aliens are just cooler. <laughs>